sing that chorus together one more time as you make your way to your seats. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We're glad to have you here with us tonight. We have PCC. They're going to that's called a Christian college. They're going to come in just a few moments, but we're going to receive the offering. And we have one of our missionaries here, Brother uh, Stephen Burke with uh, in Malaysia, Southeast Asia. And I'm going to have him come give us a word of testimony and lead us in prayer. Amen. And we're just glad to have him here with us tonight. Let's give him a warm welcome as he comes up here. Amen. We're glad to see him here with us. At he just shocked me. He came walking in there, and I goes, there's our missionary. What's he doing here? And then I remembered, I read in his missionary letter that they were home, and uh, his mother lives down south of us, right? And, uh, and he had to go and see her, but we're glad to have him. Give us a word of testimony, and then lead us in prayer for the offering tonight, Thank brother. You, Pastor. I did surprise the pastor and apologize for that, but I don't apologize for coming and thanking you all for all the years of uh, just faithful prayer and, and uh, support for the ministry in Singapore and in Malaysia, a church in uh, Singapore, Victory Baptist Church, uh, Malacca Bible Baptist Church, and Equal Bible Baptist Church are all doing well. And we thank the Lord for the Lord's grace in growing them. We're seeing people uh, saved, uh, turning from darkness unto light to see lives change. And just this past year, we saw two 74-year-olds, uh, uh, Taoist, come to know Christ as their Savior. Hey. And just uh, the Lord overpowers. His, it, it, the Holy Spirit just works, and it's, it's through prayer. Hey. And so we do thank you uh, for uh, all of the partnerships that we have. Uh, Bonnie and I, it amazes us. We're beginning our 31st year uh, over there. Hey. And... Uh, what a wonderful way to grow old it <laughs> is. It's, and uh, again, we do ask for a specific prayer, and that's the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into his harvest. Hey. And we've been in Malaysia. It's a closed country. We've been there 16 years, so it's not as closed as they think it is. And so don't let, don't let uh, people keep you out, okay? If the Lord wants you to come, come on, and uh, we'll... Uh, uh, just have a, a time serving the Lord over there together. Well, we want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask his blessing. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do again thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your goodness to us. And uh, even as we uh, prepare to, to take an offering, help us. Uh, as David did, look at what you have given us and what is going to be given and just be amazed at the fact that you have given us so much and that we might give back to you. We thank you for your blessings. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and that faithfulness being demonstrated through this people. And we do uh, thank you so much for your goodness again Pray that um, we would be uh, attentive tonight, our hearts would be open uh, to the presentation, and that you would change our lives a little bit more tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey.
to have the Proclaim ministry team from Pensacola Christian College here with us tonight. We're going to let them have the program. They'll be singing and, and uh, doing some other, th I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do here tonight, but uh, I know they're going to preach, and, uh, and so we're glad to have them here with us tonight. Let's give them a warm welcome as they come tonight. Amen. <laughs> We are the Proclaim Ministry team from Pensacola. My name is Manny D. Ford, and I just graduated in May, so I'm brand new to this whole adult life thing, but it's been good so far. I have the privilege of leading these guys this summer, and Pastor Dan had asked, he's like, do you guys have any skits? And we do. So we're going to start off with a skit, hope you guys enjoy it, and then after that, the guys are going to come and sing some songs. Okay, well, good evening. And uh, the skit we're going to do for you has to do with lollipops. Now, I have to ask, adults, kids alike, be honest with me now. Don't lie in the house of the Lord. How many of you like lollipops? Put your hand up. All right. Let's give majority. Okay, another question for you. Once again, don't lie in the Lord's house. How many of you enjoy it when your lollipop gets taken from you? Yeah, that's nobody. Exactly. Well, we're going to show you tonight how bad it feels when somebody tries to take your lollipop.
them a chance to catch their breath, not to make a fool of themselves in front of all of you. Now they gotta come up here and sing. So now the guys are really coming. All-sufficient God, eternal Redeemer, through His precious blood, our fortress forever on His name we call. Awesome, magnificent, all-sufficient God, awesome, magnificent, all-sufficient God, eternal Redeemer, through His precious blood our fortress forever on his name we call awesome magnificent all-sufficient god he is here among us in all his majesty we have come to honor our gracious king of kings he has been so faithful and he will remain. Join us as we worship, crown him with praise. Awesome, magnificent, all-sufficient God, eternal Redeemer, through his precious blood, our fortress forever, on his name we call. Awesome, magnificent, all-sufficient God. Shake hands with your neighbor and say it's good to be in the presence of the blessed Holy Trinity. Let us lift our voices to Christ who reigns above, generously granting mercy, grace, and love. Awesome, magnificent, all-sufficient God, eternal Redeemer, through His precious blood, our fortress forever, on His name we call. Awesome, magnificent, all-sufficient God, our fortress forever, on His name we call. Awesome, magnificent, awesome, magnificent, awesome, magnificent, all-sufficient God. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still trying to catch my breath after that skit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here tonight to set our hearts and minds on an all-sufficient and amazing Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who had provided everything that we may live with him one day forever. Titus 3.5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. <laughs> Somebody help me. And just then he knew that Jesus came through with his saving grace. Covered by mercy, cleansed by the flow. Though my sins were scarlet, Jesus washed them whiter than snow. There on the cross, he took my place. When he cried, it's finished. The sin that was paid, now I am free, forever saved. Mercy met grace. I was that sinner, wasting my life without a purpose. I had no direction, no hope in sight. Then I cried for mercy. Could somebody help me? And just
just said I knew that Jesus came through and saved me by grace. Covered by mercy, cleansed by the flow. Though my sins were scarlet, Jesus washed them whiter than snow. There on the cross, he took my place. When he cried, it's finished, the sin that was paid. Now I am free, forever saved. Mercy met grace. Cleansed by the flow. Though my sins were scarlet, Jesus washed them whiter than snow. There on the cross, he took my place. When he cried, it's finished. Our sin that was paid, now we are free, forever saved. Mercy met grace. Now we are free, forever saved. Mercy met grace. Mercy met grace. Well, we are delighted and thrilled to be here with y'all tonight. Thank you, Pastor Jackson, for giving us this opportunity. And we are looking forward to what the Lord has in store for the rest of the service tonight. We thoroughly enjoyed being able to be with uh, the day camp early this afternoon, getting to do a bunch of activities with them. We enjoyed ourselves, and uh, now we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do in his house tonight. We want to take this moment, let you know who we are, where we're from, what we're studying in college, all that important stuff. So I'll start with myself. My name is Seth Fuller. I'm a senior pastoral ministries major from Sharpsburg, Georgia. And at the piano is Joe Lovato. He is a junior music education major from Fort Collins, Colorado. Hi, my name is Drew Ullman. I will be a senior next semester, and I am studying business management, and I'm from Westfield, Indiana. Hello, my name is Owen Moss. I'm studying graphic design, and I'll be a junior next semester, and I'm from the Bahamas. My name is Mitch Gamble. I'm from Hickory, North Carolina, and I'm studying pastoral ministries, and I just finished my freshman year. The next song we'll be doing is a popular hymn, but with an a cappella arrangement entitled, Blessed Be the Name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The next song we're about to sing has to do with how precious the Word of God is to us as believers. And I believe we all can testify that God's word truly is precious to us. It's God's very words written down on pages so that we may read it, know more about our Lord and Savior, know more about God. And for those who don't know Christ, they come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And what a privilege we have. And it amazes me the fact that God would give us his words that we may know him. The fact that we get to know our Heavenly Father. And that's what this next song deals with. It's entitled, There is a Reason. That there is a reason why God has given us his word. But before we get there, there's a poem that goes hand in hand with this song. It's entitled, The Precious Bible. 
And it deals with that very thought that God's word is precious to us. And it starts something like this. Though the cover is worn and the pages are torn, and though places bear traces of tears, yet more precious than gold is this book, worn and old, which can scatter and shatter my fears. When I prayerfully look in this precious old book, many pleasures and treasures I see, many tokens of love from the Father above, who is nearest and dearest to me. This old book is my guide, it's a friend by my side, it will lighten and brighten my way. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I read it and heed it each day.
No, there is a reason why. God has given us his holy word. And one of those reasons is so that we can know the promises that he has given to us. I would say that about the age of eight, when I heard a message on hell, and the preacher that night, it was at a youth meeting, and he preached it in a graveyard, so I don't know if that was like his scare tactic or whatever, but you know. <laughs> well, that night, I heard the message on hell, and it honestly, it terrified me. Like, that was a place that I did not want to go. And it struck home because I knew that I couldn't get out of hell and that I deserved it. And so I went to my mom that night, and she explained to me the plan of salvation, and I accepted Christ that night. And ever since then, the devil just constantly tries to put doubts into our, my mind. But I remember the promise that was given in Romans 10, verse 13, where he says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And I'm so glad that that night I called upon the name of the Lord, and I know that he saved me. The next two songs that we're about to sing speaks to the truth of our salvation. I am redeemed, therefore I can know that it's all right now. There was a time I traveled a lonely sinful road beneath a heavy burden bending low. are different, for Jesus took my load. It's all right now. It's all right now, I'm his, I know. It's all right now. It's all right now, for I am in my Savior's care. It's all right now. It's all right now, my Savior hears and answers prayer. He'll walk, with me He'll walk beside me till I climb the heavenly stair. Everything and everything is all right now. No more in sin I wonder, no more in darkness roam. The Lord has placed my feet on higher ground. Each day new heights I'm gaining, my soul is nearing home. It's all right now. It's all right now, I'm heaven bound. It's all right now. It's all right now, for I am in my Savior's care. It's all right now. It's all right now, my Savior hears and answers prayer. Walk with me. He'll walk beside me till I climb the heavenly stair. And everything, and everything is all right now. It's all right now. It's all right now, for I am in my Savior's care. It's all right now. It's all right now, my Savior hears and answers prayer. He'll walk with me. He'll walk beside me till I climb the heavenly stair. And everything, and everything is all right now. All right now. All right now. The 
saints were all assembled there in praise. Choir was softly singing, and every hand was raised. The preacher made his final plea to every heart that would believe. Then a hush fell. sinner felt his grace and the saints and angels did rejoice when the child began to lift his voice redeemed I am redeemed the greatest song this mortal tongue can sing was lost, but now I'm found. His love has turned my life around. Amazing grace has saved the wretch like me. I am redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ. joy we have in Jesus Christ to know that we are redeemed and that one day we are going to heaven. I have a sister. I have a 17 year old sister who's very beautiful even though I don't tell her that. I call her ugly. <laughs> but she calls me fat so we, it makes up for it. So. She's good at sports. She's very good at volleyball and she's a very good uh, violinist. Terrible pianist but she's a good violinist. Not too long ago something happened that changed her life. She came down with a sickness that had no name. It was a sickness that caused her to have seizures. It wasn't epilepsy, it was something else. No medicine, no doctor, no medical plan could ever fix it. So even now, a year later, we still don't know how to fix it. And you know, it took away a lot from her. It took sports. She was very athletic. She loved being with her friends on volleyball courts, loved to go on the basketball trips. But she had to say goodbye to all that just because of a disease that she has, has no idea where it came from. And you know, it was really hard on me and my parents. You know, seeing my sister while I'm playing basketball with these guys, she's at home, sitting, trying to rest up before the next seizure. And as hard as that was, as hard it was for me and my parents, crying almost every night, asking God why, you know, I figured out why. I went to her room one time, and I looked on her wall, and she started putting verses on the wall. One I, one I remember very well, really well is Nehemiah 8.10. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Maybe I couldn't understand it. And maybe she couldn't understand it. But God did. And, she was, and God was doing something in her life, spiritually, that I've never seen anything like it. Every time I see her come back from a trip, she's always really happy. 
This sickness does not define her, but rather what Jesus Christ is doing inside of her right now. This next song we'll be doing talks about how good God is. That no matter what storm we face in our lives, no matter what happens, God is always and ever faithful. shadows fall around me when the day turns into night I am saved within his keeping for he draws me to his side ever faithful through the fury First Samuel 20. First Samuel 20 is where we'll be for the next couple minutes. Like Seth said, we really enjoyed hanging around the gym all day long with some of the some of the boys earlier today. Played kickball, dodgeball, every kind of variation of dodgeball there is. It was a lot of fun, and I think we're all gonna sleep really well tonight. But first Samuel 20, starting in verse 35. My Bible has uh, titles throughout it, and at the beginning, on the top of this page, it says, Jonathan's Signal. So if you already know the story of David and Jonathan, you understand where we are, where we're jumping into here. But some background, in case you don't know, is Saul's now been ruling as king of Israel for a number of years, and through some sins he had committed, he had, he had made some sacrifices that it was, not, it was not his place to make, and because of that, God said, your line will no longer reign. And he brought in David. And through some miraculous circumstances, David had actually brought into the palace before he was ever crowned king and became a, one of the best friends we see in the whole Bible to Saul's, or Saul's son, Jonathan. Well, Saul sees that David is a threat. And twice he tries to kill him, and twice he, he's not able to. And it forces David into hiding out in the wilderness. 
And that's where we jump into the story of David and Jonathan here in verse 35 of chapter 20. And I'm just going to read through the end of the chapter. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto the lad and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept one with another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn, both of us, in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Now, obviously, the main characters in this story are David and Jonathan. And, you know, that's kind of the whole, the whole plot line is this code that they've come up with that allows David to know it's, you know, it's not safe to come back to the palace. You have to leave. But there's a third person in this story that... That doesn't get enough attention, and I think, I think that's a shame. It's this, it's this little lad, Jonathan's servant boy, that's mentioned throughout, throughout the entire uh, story here. He's mentioned, you know, verse uh, 36 and 38, 39, 40. And there's three ways that we can learn how to be a, a true servant of Christ through this little, boy's, this little boy's influence right here. And the first way is without question. Now... They starts with Jonathan and this little boy walking out into the desert somewhere of Israel. Not a lot of, you know, clue for the boy as to what's going on. He's just out there following his master. They're, they're walking along, walking along. They stop. Nothing around. I'm from Arizona, so there's like wide, wide open spaces. So I kind of have a good, good mental image of what this looks like. They stop there. Jonathan looks around. And then he just shoots an arrow way off into this field. And then he tells the boy to just run after it. And the boy does. He just, like, takes off. It says the boy goes after it, and Jonathan shoots an arrow over his head, past him. And if that was me, I know myself, I'd be, I'd be running, go, this is really weird. I don't know why I'm doing this. And then he shoots another arrow over my head. I would, I'd be a little exasperated. Like, Jonathan, what are you doing? It's hot. You're not even shooting at a target. And if you did, you missed it by a mile. But nowhere does it say that the boy asks why. why. Why are we out here? Why am I chasing arrows? And in our own lives, it's so easy, I think, to question God. He'll ask simple things of us. Maybe it's not chasing arrows out in the field, but maybe it's, you know, talking to the lady at the cash register at Walmart. And we say, why, God? I'm just buying milk. Why, why, did, why did you choose me for this now? Or, you know, the Great Commission. Maybe, maybe God, you can feel God tugging at your heart to go somewhere. We have a missionary here. I grew up in a missionary family, so I, I understand what it's like to be out on the mission field and things like that. Maybe, maybe God's saying, you know, putting a certain people in your, in your mind. And you say, why me? How am I, how am I going to provide for my family? Missionaries don't make a lot of money. How, how, how am I going to make it through this? God doesn't say, you know, question everything. He doesn't, he doesn't allow us to, to question things. He just expects us to go and do it. Or maybe you have a trial in your life. Mitch was talking about his sister, They'd, where you know, she, gets, she gets this problem with seizures, and they, they have no clue where it came from. He was talking about how they, they question God and say, why, what is this, first of all, and why, why is it her? She's so young. She's, so, you know, she's got so much potential, and you've brought this into our lives. This little boy, he doesn't ask why. He just goes and does it because he understands it's his duty. And second, we see that he serves without knowledge, which works right beside without question. In verse 39, it says, But the lad knew not anything, only Jonathan and David knew the matter. You know, this little boy, he's out there running after arrows. He doesn't question because he understands it's not his place to know everything that's going on. He doesn't understand that David's hiding in this very field and that this little boy is playing an integral part of saving the life of one of the future, you know, the greatest kings in all of human history. He's just out there doing what he's supposed to do. 
God doesn't tell us every little part of our lives or ever, the reason he brings things into our lives. He just expects us to serve. And I, and I think, I know in my own case, if God told me what was coming down the road, it would probably scare me to death. And I would get, I would get nothing accomplished. If you had asked me when I first went to college if after graduation I'd be standing up in front of a church speaking, I would have laughed. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Or leading, you know, I have five guys' lives in my hand for the summer. You know, I'm basically babysitting five college guys all summer long. <laughs> like, I, I, I would not have believed you. And if you said, nope, God said you're going to do it, I would have I probably dropped out of PCC, gone home, and never touched a huge Ford Transit, you know, ever in my life. I, it's scary driving that thing around sometimes. But God says that his ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. It's, it's why can't we just accept that? I, we're, we feel like we're entitled to God's opinion, and nowhere in the scripture can you find, you know, thou art given God's reasons for everything. That's not in the Bible. And third, and I think probably where it hits home the most, is this little boy, he serves without reward. In verse 40, it says, Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said, Go, carry them to the city. And then verse 41 starts, And as soon as the lad was gone, and that's the last time we hear about this boy. There's no phrase in between those two verses that says, Jonathan gave the boy a tip and sent him on his way. Nowhere that Jonathan says, Thank you. I know it's hot. Go get in the... Old Testament air conditioning. I don't know what they had, but you know, it doesn't say that. The boy just takes off, and we never hear about him again. And so many times, I feel like in our Christian lives, we expect, you know, affirmation or gratitude for every little thing we do, and that's just not the case. And, you know, growing up, I would, I would find something to do. My mom loved the house being vacuumed. I hated vacuuming, though, because it seemed like you weren't getting anything accomplished. It looked exactly how it did when you, when you started, except that the carpet was moved a different direction. So, you know, I would, I would go, and I would vacuum, show some initiative, and then I would just stand there, you know, waiting for my mom to come in. Because I loved it when she'd come in and say, oh, thank you for doing this. Or maybe I'd take out the trash. My name is Emmanuel, and I always knew when I had to take out the trash because someone, my mom or my dad would be like, Emmanuel, somewhere in the house. So if I went and took out the trash before they sang the word Emmanuel, you know, it was like angels were singing because I never did that. So I loved it when I got the thanks and the rewards. But that was the wrong motivation for doing those things. I'm sure you could go to pastor and ask, what needs done around the church? And he could pull out a list of probably some not very glamorous chores. That's not, there's, you know, there's not a lot of recognition or, or honor that comes with them. But it doesn't matter who sees it doesn't matter if there's people around in the church watching you clean the bathrooms because God's watching. Amen. And maybe, maybe you are the right kind of servant. Maybe you are the one who's genuinely serving in the spirit and not doing it for fleshly desires. Maybe, maybe you're the right kind of servant and, and you're just getting depressed because it seems like nothing, nothing's going right. No one ever notices. You, you, you realize that's not the whole purpose, but it sure is nice when someone notices. Just remember... God sees. And there's crowns in heaven for church toilets being clean. I'm not sure they're labeled that, but I'm sure there's crowns up there. <laughs> so where are we today? This, this has spoken a lot to me, and it's something I try to remind myself and these guys because, I mean, right in, the, right in the title of our traveling team is the Proclaim Ministry Team. We go into churches a day or two and just help out wherever we can. And there's not a lot of recognition or, or honor that comes with that. These guys, you know, they get some tuition paid. It doesn't help all that much. When I, I traveled as an undergrad, and I could have made a whole lot more money going home. But it taught me a, a lot of lessons about servanthood. Going out there, playing with seven, eight, nine-year-old boys, playing dodgeball. And it was great because we weren't doing it for the recognition or the rewards we are doing it because God says, go out there and be a blessing to people. So, like I said, where are we? Maybe, maybe you are serving, but you're doing it for all the wrong reasons. And you need to realize it's not about the rewards. 
Maybe, maybe God's asking you to do something, and you're saying, why me? How am I going to get this done? Or maybe you are the right kind of servant, and you're just, you're just discouraged. Remember, God sees. I don't know where you are today, but I hope that was an encouragement to you. Let's pray. Dearly Father, thank you for allowing myself and these guys to come here tonight and hopefully be a, a blessing and an encouragement. Keep us safe on the roads as we head out in the morning um, and uh, just throughout this entire summer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand to our feet.